All right, I'm very happy to introduce the next speaker, Bente Klarlund Pedersen, from, uh, from here, from the, our main hospital, Rids Hospitalet, here in uh, Copenhagen. She's been a lighthouse, a pioneer in, in how exercise uh, and uh, behavioral changes impact human health. <clears throat> Hello, everyone, and thank you very much, Morten, and the other co-organizers. Uh, it's a fantastic conference. I'm very pleased to be here. Uh, although I do not have a company, I do have to uh, I have some disclosure, uh, disclosure slides. Uh, I'm an exercise believer, and you probably have to take that into account when I tell my story. My background is that I'm a professor in internal medicine and infectious diseases, but today I am the director of a translation research center focusing on exercise as medicine. There's seven fabulous group leaders and around 70 people working with this. So, systemic chronic inflammation may contribute to more than 50% of all deaths. Chronic inflammation is associated with most chronic uh, diseases, but it's of interest that exercise also works as medicine for all of these diseases, and a lot of evidence has showed us that there is a dose-dependent effect of exercise on mortality. And why is that? Three decades ago, we found that in relation to acute exercise, there is an exponential increase in IL-6 followed by anti-inflammatory cytokines. And we found that in relation to exercise, mus muscles would release IL-6 and on a muscle fibers would release uh, IL-6 into the blood. We also found that IL-6 works as an energy sensor, so if muscle glycogen is slow, much more IL-6 is produced. And recently, we published this study with Daniel Lieberman, suggesting that IL-6 actually works as an energy allocator in, in muscle. So just a few examples, IL-6 enhances lipolysis and fat oxidation in humans in vivo. Uh, IL-6 enhances insulin-stimulated glucose uptake in humans in vivo, and thereby IL-6 fulfill the uh, criteria for an exercise uh, factor, such factor uh, researchers have been looking for for many, many years. So we suggest that exercise, uh, or we suggest that muscle works as an endocrine uh, organ, and we uh, came up with the term myokines and defined it as cytokines or other peptides, uh, that are produced, expressed, and released by muscle fibers and exert either local or systemic uh, effects. So I will focus on the effect of uh, myokines on, uh, on, on inflammation. But I think, and I will show you that there are acute effects and long-term effects, but I think it's, uh, it's, it's really difficult with this multifunctional molecule, IL-6. You probably um, know it as a bad guy, right? But you should know that IL-6 is both a cytokine, it can work as an adipokine, and I will focus on uh, IL-6 as a myokine, uh, and I showed you this picture uh, before. So the myokine IL-6 has anti-inflammatory effects and a lot of metabolic effects. Still, it is a paradox that basal resting levels of IL-6 is associated with all the bad things in life, whereas exercise induces this acute increase in IL-6, sometimes up to a 100-fold increase. So if IL-6 is not always the bad guy, who is? So we looked at TNF. Uh, TNF induces uh, IL-6, and could it be that IL-6 levels just reflect ongoing TNF replication? So we infuse TNF to people together with a clamp, and uh, stable isotopes, glucose. I was the first test person. Uh, my student gave me 100 times too much and I was without blood pressure for three hours. So this is a very uh, powerful molecule. But when we um, did the study in a proper way, just to elevate CNF a few fold, as you see in chronic inflammation, we found a very acute um, a reduction in uh, skeletal muscle insulin, uh, uh, that we find the TNF induced skeletal muscle insulin resistance, and we also found a molecule uh, that was um, uh, explaining this because TNF uh, induces inhibition of phosphorylation AS160. But back to this, 
when we do these uh, infusion studies or blocking studies, it seems that TNF and IL-6 totally, uh, have totally different behaviors with regards to glucose uptake and fat oxidation. And now we speculated, could it be that IL-6 is simply inhibiting TNF? So if you look at this cytokine cascade again, you can see that IL-6 increases independent of an effect of TNF. In sepsis, we see the same uh, cytokine pattern, but here TNF uh, is preceding the increase in IL-6. We used E. coli endotoxin as, uh, as uh, a, a, a tool to study inflammation. We infused a small dose of endotoxin to humans, and we provoked this increase in TNF in resting people. But when the same people had uh, exercised before, uh, TNF did not increase, and when we infused IL-6 to mimic an effect uh, of um, exercise on IL-6, again, we found no increase in TNF. Telling us that exercise and IL-6 acutely can have uh, anti-inflammatory effects, uh, both with regard to an effect on TNF and by the fact that they increase uh, at least interleukin-1 receptor antagonists and also IL-10. And then there are many, many studies showing, cross-sectional studies and longitudinal studies showing that exercise training will lower uh, systemic chronic inflammation at rest. I will show you um, what happens in a very short time if people do the opposite of what we tell them to do. So we asked young healthy men to be lazy, to take the car instead of walking, to take the elevator instead of the climbing the stairs. And then could, uh, they could do just, they did just 1,000 to 2,000 steps a day. So they were lazy, but they were not bed resting. So what we did now was that we recruited active people walking 10,000 steps a day, and they were only allowed to walk 1,500 steps per day for 14 days. 15 levels decreased, um, sorry, 15 levels, fitness levels decreased. They lost 1.2 kilo in body weight. Please don't tell it to anyone. So they lost, uh, of course, muscle mass. And when we did an oral fat tolerance test, you could see sometimes uh, the plasma became milky, blood lipids increased much more in a longer time. Then we did an ODTT, which indicated uh, insulin resistance. We confirmed this with an insulin clamp. We used stable isotopes, confirming that inactivity reduces insulin-stimulated peripheral glucose uptake, and this was visible in when we took biopsies and looked at the insulin signaling cascade. And then we looked at, at visceral fat, and you can see the arrows pointing at uh, the visceral fat uh, before and after, and although they lost uh, a little more than one kilo, then they accumulated uh, uh, quite a, a significant amount of visceral fat, and we have repeated this in many independent studies, also in animal studies. So in relation to these 14 days of inactivity, uh, my student called this 14 days at Mallorca all-inclusive study. Uh, we find impaired glucose uptake, impaired insulin signaling, hyperlipidemia, loss of muscle mass and fitness, and then increased visceral fat mass. And why is this important? It's important because there are many indications that visceral fat is invaded by macrophages and is the source of chronic systemic inflammation, which can then influence most cells of the body. Then uh, the next question is, of course, what is the link? And here we also looked at uh, IL-6. It has been well established that um, IL-6 deficiency can cause uh, mature onset uh, obesity. We have a lot of different uh, human intervention studies showing, for instance, that when we block IL-6, uh, it impairs mobilization of free fatty acids during rest and exercise in both lean and obese people. So in this study, we asked or whether IL-6 blockade could ameliorate reduction in adipose tissue, especially ectopic adipose tissue following exercise training. So we had people who were healthy but uh, uh, obese, abdominally obese, and we asked them to train or we supervised their training for 12 weeks. Um, we did that either with or without uh, blocking IL-6 signaling with uh, tocilizumab, and we had two control groups, either with or without uh, IL-6 uh, blockade. So 
What we found here was that exercise training reduced, after 12 weeks, reduced visceral fat mass. That was expected. But we also found that the exercise-induced fat reduction was reversed by IL-6 blockade. So IL-6 is required for exercise-mediated reduction in adipose tissue. So the myokine IL-60, IL-6 increase during exercise is required for this reduction. We found the same when we looked at another depot, epicardial uh, adipose tissue, which has a very, very bad uh, prognostic, uh, uh, is a very bad, bad prognostic sign. Uh, a reduction in relation to exercise training, which was abolished when we inhibited IL-6 signaling. So again, IL-6 is also required for epicardial fat loss following exercise. We also found that IL-6 was required for uh, muscle mass growth uh, and for, 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 uh, of, of, of the heart. So both acutely and on a long-term basis, exercise can induce um, uh, anti-inflammatory effects. We also find that exercise induces IL-6 uh, it delays gastric emptying in humans, so blood glucose is not high after a meal, which again can uh, dampen inflammation. So there, I hope I can convince you that muscle is this um, uh, endocrine organ. It produces hundreds of, of myokines. And uh, the last few minutes of my talk, I will simply share uh, data from uh, an exercise as medicine study. We have many, but I will give you some indications from uh, the effects in patients with type 2 diabetes. And here we were uh, inspired by, by te the television. I think most of you um, know the Biggest Loser program, or, and we, we have another program in Denmark called U-Turn. We have a charismatic coach. He invites people who have big problems, obesity, depression, uh, type 2 diabetes, into uh, prime time television, and then they come out in the other end, and they are very lean and very happy. Don't know this kind of, yeah. So we wondered whether this also would work in real life. And we uh, copied uh, the intervention from the television and asked whether intensive lifestyle could be used as medication. Randomized uh, patients with type 2 diabetes to this U-turn model where they had to exercise um, uh, one, year, one, um, one hour six times a week for one a year. And then um, we had a control group. And we had a, 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 a blinded a physician who would control their medication uh, according to an algorithm. So this is the HbA1c, and you have to remember that if HbA1c declined, then the medication would be uh, reduced. So let's look at the, the medication. After one year, 74% in the intervention group, the U-turn group, could reduce their medication. After one year, 56% could re discontinue hypoglycemic medication. I'll show this again. This is a U-turn group. After seven, one year, reduction in medication for 74% and 56% was without medication. We didn't do anything for the next year, and after one year, there was only 34%. So people return, but maybe six times a week is also too much. So we just published this uh, study led by uh, group leader Matthias Witt Larsen. Uh, and here uh, we, um, we had four arms, uh, control, diet, three times exercise a week, and again six times exercise a week. And we have a lot of data, but just uh, showing you that maybe um, the disposition index can sort of be, be restored. There is a weight loss, and it's of course mainly uh, due to diet, but uh, exercise adds to this. Uh, we also find that exercise has a profound effect on uh, hep hepatic steatosis. And especially look at the pancreas. This little part is not published yet. So diet alone has no effect, but exercise three and six times has a marked, gives a marked reduction in fat infiltration in the pancreas. And again, an effect on visceral fat also. When we look at discontinuation of uh, medication, uh, we find that uh, there's a large effect of all intervention groups and maybe three times a week is really something that would give you highly significant effects. Looking into the data, it's clear that this intensive lifestyle intervention 
with high volume of exercise has the potential to improve beta cell function and is associated with decreased abdominal adiposity and low grade inflammation. So with this short talk, I just want to emphasize the role of exercise and muscle as an endocrine organ and suggest to you that the anti-inflammatory effects of exercise may contribute to a long health span. Thanks to, again to uh, the people who did the work and these 70 people working in our research center. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ben. That was really, uh, really amazing. I, I will take the opportunity to start with a question. So in the... Don't ask me if I exercise. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I don't know. So uh, in, uh, in the aging field, we, we often think of IL-6 as, yeah. as something that is secreted from senescent cells. It's bad mm -hmm. for us. So I'm wondering if it's, if it's these peaks that are important and that would return so to it, baseline. So it's two things. First, I should say that if we, con which, if we compare untrained people and trained people at a resting state, plasma IL-6 is very low in the trained people, okay? So, but it seems that these acute spikes of myokine IL-6, IL-6 released from the muscle in this context has metabolic beneficial effects. It also seems that this IL-6 is required in order to reduce the, the amount of ectopic fat, which is definitely a source of all the inflammatory and detrimental molecules. Does that make sense? That makes sense to me at least. Yeah. Um, one more question. We have one down here. Um, no, no, wait. Wait, wait. They can't hear you online if you're speaking okay. so up. So the type of physical activity, you know, sprinting okay. versus hit yeah. versus okay. steady state. We clearly, yeah. we know yeah. from a, you know, a subjective sprinting and hit works better for visceral fat but yeah so when when it look when we look at myokines it is the the amount of muscle mass engaged it is the intensity and it is the duration of exercise that matters but there's something very specific about acute high 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 intense exercise which will provoke an increase in lactate and release instant i mean within seconds almost high uh, high levels of, uh, of IL-6. But we also see this effect when we do strength training with the, with, the, with the patients and from a more pragmatic point of view, what we suggest in for most of uh, the old patients is a combination of aerobic and strength training. Yeah. We, we have not done that, but that would of course be very interesting. Yeah, thank you. Have you over here? Have you explored if IL-6 derived from muscle is molecularly different than from inflammatory cells or yeah. other cell types? So the molecules are the same, uh, but um, and, and we've, we've thought for many, many years that this is simply because there is a special uh, split variant uh, of, of IL-6, but it, it seems to be that it's very context uh, dependent. So it is a context and um, uh, so, so I, you could say if, if IL-6 is elevated where you do not need to mobilize uh, uh, fat and mobilize uh, uh, energy, then it, it is detrimental. But during an exercise situation where you need to allocate energy from one uh, organ to another, then you need this, uh, as, uh, this as, a, as a tool to, 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 to allocate energy. So it's context dependent. It's not different molecules. All right, thank you so much, Binda. That was really amazing.